Regular followers of this channel will recall a video I made about my experiences up on the North Korean border, a fascinating and odd place with a palpable sense of tension in the air. You know that behind those hills lurk masses of artillery guns, missile systems and tanks, all with one ultimate objective, the reunification of the Korean peninsula by force of arms. A few days ago these tensions were drawn sharply into focus once again when North Korean artillery fired hundreds of rounds close to the South Korean border and the demilitarized zone. I've often wondered how North Korea could invade the South, and I recently obtained an outline of the North Korean plan for just such a scenario, and frankly it is terrifying. The primary point concerning a North Korean invasion of the South is the element of surprise. The assault will come out of the blue, not giving the South Koreans or the US any real warning. Hence, there could not be a build-up of US military forces across the region ready to hit the North Koreans hard. The opening North Korean assault envisions a strike against the US Indo-Pacific Command. This would presumably mean a ballistic missile strike against Camp H.M. Smith in Hawaii. Perhaps more likely, missile attacks on US forces Korea headquarters at Camp Humphreys in Pyeongtaek, South Korea, plus also US headquarters in Japan at Yokota Air Base in Tokyo. Either way, the idea is to decapitate or severely degrade US command and control at a critical moment, slowing the US response to any North Korean assault. It seems unlikely that these would be nuclear attacks. Immediately this strike or strikes are made, phase one of the North Korean invasion commences on day one when four North Korean artillery regiments close to the demilitarized zone will unleash a 30-minute artillery strike on selected targets, including the South Korean capital city Seoul and other urban centers within range of their largest artillery and rocket battalions, as well as South Korean and US military installations. The largest North Korean artillery guns can hit targets up to 40 kilometers away, bringing most of Seoul into artillery range. Breaking down this into figures from Western analysis, this would entail the following. The RAND Corporation conducted a study of several scenarios, including an all-out artillery strike along the length of the demilitarized zone. RAND calculated that the North Koreans using 5,700 long and medium range artillery guns and rocket systems, the longest range weapons hitting parts of Seoul, including 324 170mm guns and 54 250mm multiple rocket launchers or MRLs. The artillery would hit Seoul, Incheon, Gimpo, Peju, Yongchen, Dongchuchong, Cherwon, Yonggu, Goseong, and the U.S. base at Camp Casey, which contains 6,300 U.S. military personnel. In 30 minutes, an approximate 192,500 artillery shells and 240mm rockets would be fired, falling on targets the length of the demilitarized zone. Casualties in Seoul alone are estimated at 135,000, with over 20,000 fatalities. These artillery attacks would destroy communications and public utilities in the areas adjacent to the demilitarized zone, and trigger a flood of millions of refugees moving south to escape the developing war. Day one of the North Korean plan has been christened Fiery Courtyard by Pyongyang. During this day, immediately after the artillery strike, 50,000 North Korean commandos and other special forces will make surprise assaults on South Korean and US military installations, and also major manufacturing facilities in the border area, to a depth of some 40 kilometers, into South Korea. 
Part of the object of the commando operations is the identification and capture of U.S. citizens living in South Korea for use as hostages. The Korean figures identifying some 150,000 U.S. citizens. South Korean artillery positions and missile batteries will also be neutralized. Missile and artillery attacks are expected to have destroyed most of South Korea's attack helicopters and aircraft on bases that are close to the border. Deeper range, surface-to-surface -surface missile attacks will be made on South Korean and U.S. bases that are further south in South Korea to demoralize the enemy and further slow the U.S. and South Korean response to the attack. Day two is the full ground invasion, led by the dropping of 10,500 North Korean paratroopers into major South Korean cities to commence urban warfare in the South Korean and U.S. rear areas causing more confusion and attacking lines of communication, capturing or blowing strategic bridges, and attacking military bases, and so on. Simultaneously, four North Korean mechanized divisions will be unleashed across the demilitarized zone, consisting of 4,600 tanks and some 3,000 other armored fighting vehicles, followed closely behind by infantry divisions. Day three of the campaign sees the North Korean army continuing to advance south against disorganized and weak South Korean and U.S. resistance. Whilst in the conquered areas, Operation Stability has commenced, restoring public utilities, law and order, and feeding the populace. And that is the North Korean plan in a nutshell. Could it succeed? I'll let you guys argue that one in the comments section. Certainly, all analyses of North Korean intentions make the point that the South Korean and U.S. forces could not stop the initial 30-minute artillery barrage and rocket barrage, which would cause huge damage to the South Korean economy and infrastructure and massive loss of life. Whether the U.S. and South Korean forces could stop the subsequent ground invasion of four divisions of some 7,600 armored vehicles, with their available air and ground assets currently in South Korea, is debatable. The North Korean success, just like its 1950 invasion, is predicated on surprise and speed. And of course, there is the nuclear question to consider. Unlike recent U.S. adversaries, North Korea is a nuclear armed state, which poses severe problems for any U.S. counterattack. Anyway, what do you think? Leave your comments below. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share. Also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.